our loving pranams to our Divine Master, Sadhguru Swami Shivananda Ji Maharaj, our pranams to the Holy Trinity of Sri Ananda Ashram, Papa Ramdas, Mother Krishna Bhai, and Swami Satchidananda, our heartfelt welcome to our honored guest, Sri Swami Muktananda Ji Maharaj of Ananda Ashram, India, and Sri Dada Prasad. And we are greatly honored to have both of you in our midst once more. And tonight is just a little love offering to the Divine in the form of a little satsang. And I welcome all the devotees present in the shrine. Pranams to all of you as well. And welcome. To Yeah. 
between meditation and chanting initially we have been asked to chant any name of god to connect our ourselves with him but what the proposal is to say unless you link yourself with the author of your be your life is in vain We don't know all those back the background, but when we are in touch with, when we are drawn by a spiritual preceptor, he says, "Chant." We have faith in him. We have reverence for his words, so we chant. As we keep on chanting, our mind slowly identifies itself totally with the raga, the accompaniments. And slowly, you know, we will be entering into the lyrics, and then we get habituated. There is an inexplicable joy at the time of chanting. We may not be able to know what it is. We may not be able to express what it is. When we have developed the taste, and when we go and uh, sit before the guru, and the guru. Either he will by himself say, 
or we may ask and he will say that the name you are chanting is the name of one who is within you and who is making you to chant. So far we have been thinking we have been chanting. But the Guru says you are chanting the name of one who is within you who is making you to chant. In order to understand that we may have to take to this inward journey. Only then Probably we may be able to get some idea, something approximating to the reality. Because it can't be expressed. The one who is making me to chant, it is something like that, you know, when you look at me, you are seeing through the eyes. That which is seeing through your eyes cannot be seen with your eyes. So it cannot be expressed. But we will be, so far I have been seeing the song. I have been chanting. But a little bit of introverted thinking will make us realize that the chanting is going on, something is there. So when we set on the process, we can call it as we are on a contemplative mode, meditative mode. As soon as we start doing it, the mind will not allow us to do it. It is so turbulent, you know. After one or two or three or four chanting, the mind will have its own play. So how to bring it back? Again, this Nama chanting helps. Papa used to say, there are four types of chanting. Three types. Fourth one, it becomes your habit. The first one is Poka chanting. We are to do Om Shri Ram, Dya Ram, Dya Dya Ram. When we try to practice it, the second one is silent chanting. In silent chanting, the lip and tongue will move, but the sound will not come. We try to practice it. After two or three or four, again the mind may go out. Again we open our eyes, restart. There is no shortcut. When we are sufficiently practiced this, over days, weeks, months, the mind will gradually become disciplined and then we go to the mental chanting. In the mental chanting, the sound will not come, lip and tongue will not move, but you will chant, you will hear. Again the mind may go, immediately open, restart. When we keep on doing this, after three, four chanting, again the mind may go, open, restart, open, restart, open, restart. But severing effort, patient effort. Every day morning we spend about five to ten minutes if possible. On, a, on an occasion like this or on important days connected with our Gurus, uh, life and teachings. On that day probably we may be able to spend more time or when you happen to visit a spiritual institution or a temple, it might be for a long time. Anyway, we keep on trying this. Daily suppose 5 to 10 minutes we try that mental chanting. After starting this, chanting starts, slowly we will try to hear our own chanting. This can be practiced even from the vocal chanting. Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. We must hear our own chanting. This is another method by which we put a fence to our thoughts. The outgoing tendencies will be at a very great extent arrested. Hearing our own. So, vocal chanting we try to hear. Silent chanting we try to hear, then mental chanting we try to hear. When we try to, when we ask we progress, one day we will be blessed with the stillness. The thing we are 
ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम जय चैनी और ओम नम शिवाय वट एवर वी आर कंफर्टेबल विथ वी ट्राई टू हियर आर ओम चैनी देन सडनली द क्वेश्चन कम्स हु इज चैनी हु इज हियरिंग एवरीथिंग कम्स टू योर स्टाफ सो मेडिटेशन इज अ प्रोसेस बाय विच it it takes itself to a stillness of thought where it gets effaced it is not we are doing we are not doing anything so we can say that there would be so many interpretation about meditation but this is one of the interpretation that it is a process of stilling our mind because papa used to say utterance of god's name is to make the mind ultimately still free from all thoughts it is in the stillness that you know and realize god so chanting and meditation should go on because we are all we are on full timers every day we have got so many challenges to be met with duties to be honor commitments to be kept up so many so many so many so in the midst of all these things if we are to maintain this probably 5 to 10 minutes if we do that what is the tangible gain so not merely chanting meditating and chanting the moment we are blessed with a glimpse of our original nature that is stillness serenity peace calmness quietude blissful fullness these are all the synonyms when we get a glimpse of this for a quarter of a second or a for a for a twice like this then our effort is to lengthen it as much as possible and the advantage of meditation is even while we are acting even while we are busy with our household family professional and social activities there will be an undercurrent in us for example now we were chanting swamiji was chanting om shri ram ram leaving all uh, accompaniments now we will again try out no? mantra ro ba chanti all of you can join after we stop om shri ram
be found sound is coming but there is a gap between om shri no we become conscious of the gap between the two sounds we try to concentrate the point parapuji papa used to say through the sound you enter into the stillness within you so then when that means the sound can come only on a soundless base of sound about which we are not aware we are carried away by the sound but actually the purpose of the sound is to make us aware of the base from which it comes because all of us are living a busy life activity the consciousness does not allow us to sit quiet we are taught all of by the five organs of sense organs they keep on going out in search of sense of objects and then the intellect when it receives the stimuli it gives the instruction and the organs of action perform we are busy in that there is no gap right from the moment we get up in the morning till we retire to bed this has been going on but now when we try for this for 5 minutes we try to realize the sound can come only on a soundless base and we are that so meditation helps us to have a glimpse of this we may feel it we may forget we feel then we will slowly stretch it to all our activities even by the movement walking we know that there is a base a movement is subtracted then only this walking can take place like this slowly we will try to identify the base from which the sense of individuality exists we will become slowly so in, in the nama helps us chanting helps us to remember him this way and later on as we keep on progressing who is making me to chant then papa will say life is the expression of atman the breathing goes on not because of us the heart beats not because of us the blood circulation goes on not because of us the digestion takes place not because of us if these four are not there we don't exist this is what is called life force so even the very act of chanting can be done only when there is life force so he is making me to chant all this inward journey is possible only through meditation and nama chanting will take us to that stage initially nobody will be able to know all these things we go there we go for a chanting for a bhajan session we are enthused to that session there is a, a positive diversion in our mind we are free from our routine thoughts routine bothers so there is a relative joy it is not the ultimate joy relative joy and then we are again drawn by the guru more and more in his teaching Gurudev used to say that look within, look within, look within. He keeps on bringing that, and on silence also he has elaborated on the word. Silence is Brahman. So silence also we may not know the meaning. The literal meaning, okay, we know that where there is no sound, there is silence. But it is something more deeper than that. So for all that, Nama Chandi with meditation. side by side with meditating on the attributes that he is the life force as i know this meditation will help us one more thing chanting and meditation goes to go hand in hand my mind may run right you know then we closely start analyzing why is it running right there appears one more word it comes outer activity should be compatible with inner aspiration inner aspiration is to remember him so right from morning the moment i get up from my bed till i retire 
whatever activities I do, I must try now as far as possible to link myself to the author of everything. There could be so many methods. Anything we handle, we handle with a touch of love, touch of perfection, <coughs> touch of dedication, touch of gratitude. We know we are not brought in anything. Even for our very existence, we need air to breathe. During our COVID moment, many, I don't know about South Africa, in India, many people have to pay through their nose for oxygen. What do you call it? Oxygen parlor. Ah, you, you have to have a machine, pay 4,000, yes. 5,000 rupees per month. Yes. And then, now do we pay? Who is providing? We are drinking water. Have we put two hydrogen and one oxygen and keep it together? <laughs> Who has provided the space? Who has provided sun? Who has provided rains? Who has provided metals, minerals, gases, vegetables, pulses, fruits? Suddenly we realize. But for which we not. So we try to bring all this. This, these are all these could be part of meditation. It is not a compartmentalized activity. When we go to ashram, when we go to uh, uh, temple, then we do that. No, no, no. In one of the articles of Gurudev, he talks about practical Vedanta. Where he says, but Vedanta is not a thing to be kept in a book or in a shelf or in a photo. It is, it is something that has to do with my very life. And it is so universal that Vedanta is past any, 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 any divisions. Because whatever that is universal, that is only coming in Vedanta. Like what we said, you know, the air we breathe, all these are universal. No? It doesn't specify the beneficiary. Whatever we use, the person who has discovered, invented or innovated, he has not specified the beneficiary. Nothing. So meditation, we can interpret, we can try to understand like this. Meditation is a process by which we try to become aware of the source from which everything springs out. In certain Bhaktotama's case, like Tukaram, Namdev, Purandardas, Tyaga Brahmam, like that in every this state, uh, India is a blessed country where there is Bhaktotama's. They were chanting and at the same time they were reveling on this. Because to them it was 24 in the self. In our case it is only a few minutes, you know. Otherwise we are back to me and mine. To them it was a total surrender to the power whom they have brought it through a name and form. And surrender was total. And it was full time. We are not in a position to do that. Right from our childhood up to certain age, we have been thinking only about me and mine. No? Only when they, they draw us <coughs> under some protection, we try to get a different uh, interpretation about our life. We understand that there is one more dimension behind all these things. Even then the mind will not refuse I and mean, accept. It will refuse. Theoretically it will accept. Practically no. Gurudev in one of his articles said, he two friends were there. If I remember the name, Ram and Gopal, something like that. One was a practical uh, person. The other was too much of theories on his head. So uh, he said that uh, this are all mithya, this are all delusion, like that, you know. Disconnected with the common run of life. The first one was very much connected with the common run of life. So one day when he was arguing like that, uh, he kept like that. Right? After a long time they were meeting again. So this Gopal asked, what is that you have brought something for me? Yes, I have brought some special. So he gave a broken mirror. A broken mirror. Then he said, you look. 
you look at you see yourself you know you are happy even in a broken world try to look at the world like that through the so called labeled negative things you see the positive things don't negate the world my the world as world is not real agree the world as god is real it just come from him it is floating in him it goes back to him so it can't be unreal even in a broken mirror still you can see yourself you know so these are all some of the things so meditation unless if meditation uh, follows this chanting the fullest benefit may not be with us for people like us in the case of bhakto tamas who in whose life it was 24 into 7 that means there was nothing else nothing else even if the so called worldly problems were harassing they were not feeling the harassment only others felt so that category we cannot imagine now <coughs> it's our history that's all let us be frank you know we are moving in a in a world where the digital is a digital era now where the cause and effect is very much there that thought is there so we need something that will bend blend with the present way of thinking so we see that every intelligence that, that brings so many things is coming from him so the vedanta will become practically possible when we take to any method and one of the method is chanting to remember him and uh, initially we may not know later on slowly we will try to know what the name stands for and what is it that the guru expects me to do it which is so michilanji maharaj in one of his talks used to say daily life and daily sadhana daily life is to enrich our life to improve the quality of our life that means the dominance of me and mine should get reduced and the more and more of we and us should come rather than me to me and sorry me to me and daily life is an opportunity given to us to test it and if we don't test it how do we know that other it will become a theory intellectual exercise so daily when we chant when we meditate and then we enter into our field of activities like family life professional life social life and then we try to see how it goes whether the, the expansion is taking place or contraction is taking place. initially it may be half percent interest we, we would like to expand 99 point it will be me to me only but slowly we try we try to be 1% 2% 5% 10% like that because this has been assured by lord krishna also sarvam apyasya dharmasya even if then he will start encouraging us if we make one step he will start encouraging us so and to remind us now that the particular word you know unless you link yourself with the author of your being your life is in vain so the author of this, this link nama helps us and nama can really help when it is followed by meditation and mysteriously you will see it opens up we may not be able to say you should go this nothing like that Actually, uh, Papa used to say it's a pathless path. Each one is unique, so each one's method also has to be unique. Initially, they place before us their life and teachings, their experience. We try to get some direction from it, and then we try to move because their equipment and our equipment are different. Their time and our time are different. Everything is different. So, in order to blend the with our body mind and equipment with all its you know the prefix and suffix taste temperament inclination limitations so many things are there so when we try to blend it with this mysteriously what is to be drawn what is to be uh, drafted for our it will come out they were all able to scale the heights because of that only 
Dr. Kupuswami, he was a professional, you know, successful in Malaysia. But one fine morning he fell. There also he started treating uh, poor patients. And God was slowly trying to open up the aperture. And when he came, he left the profession, straight went to the Krishikesh. On those days, you can well imagine, 1920s. And then he started going deep within, within, within. One Puja Swami was there and he happened to look at him. He initiated him. Not the usual way of sannyas, but initiated him into this process. And later on, the then Madhadivati of Kailas Ashram, Vishnudevanaji Maharaj, he did, did the proper initiation. But it is not because of that Kupuswami became like that. No. It was his own Urdhina. We come from Kerala. No? The Ananda Ashram was founded by Parampuji Papa Swami Ramas. He was bitter now. He was a family man. He was in the business structure. And then suddenly when he was passing through successive failures and when he knew there is no door open, he cried. Where is rest? Where is peace? Not from outside, from within. He heard, trust me, you will be free. Then he started doing it in his own way. And in two years' time, he could scale the heights. So each one is drafted from their own original. Initially, we are guided by the words of wisdom, which they have got it not because of any theory, because of their own experience. So it gets authenticated in our mind. You know, it's not theory, you know, just uh, we are passing on some information. That is only academic. But here, something you know, they are sharing their experience. So it has got its own weight. So, chanting followed by meditation really helps us to get ourselves connected with the source of us and the source of everything around us. This is somewhat clear. <laughs> yes. I will read this. Uh, uh, you know, he will give it to me. Okay. So we are truly blessed to have your darshan this evening. And uh, from my side, maybe just uh, it would be great to have some insight around your spiritual journey and maybe what are some of, what were some of those turning points in your spiritual journey that has brought you to where you are today. She would like to know about your spiritual journey and what you brought you to them at this point of life. <coughs> it's only his grace. <laughs> right from our childhood, the Ishta Devata was Shirdi Baba. So every day, Puja will be done. On Thursday, special Puja will be done. Repeating 108 times. On those days when we were all, no doubt, daughters, all sons. So when mother is out of doors, on those days they don't go to the kitchen or cook or something. So they will give us instruction from outside and then we cook everything. At that time, how, how this is introduced, you know, very nice to hear. So he, she will say that, you know, we, we don't have gas or anything, firewood. So early morning when we do that, we prepare coffee, breakfast or anything, then we will have a bath. Then mother will say, take a bowl full of water with kumkum, go to the torsi. There will be a torsi, what do you call that, torsi stand. There is a torsi plant there. So we pour water, we apply kumkum three times for production and then do pranams there and come back. 
So we do that. Then one day I asked, why should we do this? Mother in her own innocent way said, I don't know why. This has been going on from ages. It has not done any harm to us. And we were told that without the plant kingdom, we cannot survive. We may not be able to go and embrace or serve the whole plant kingdom. At least symbolically, one should be selected. And they have selected this Tulsi. We treat it as Tulsi Mata. This is all I know. So slowly they are connecting us to the plant kingdom. Then when we cook, she will say to take it to Baba's. There is a photo and there is a small stand. Offer it to him. Pray to him in your own way. Need not be any mantras. And put one torsi. And then we do that. Then said, don't take anything. Before you take for yourself, take one portion of it, small portion, and uh, take water. There is a there is a stand there. We pour water and clean it. Put this rice, uh, a little bit of dal and uh, ghee. Then we do like this. Crows will come and eat. Then only we serve. So I asked, why are we doing it? She said, I don't know. We have been doing it. Anyway, it has given us only joy, no other thing. And we are told that we should, dumb animals have to be fed. At least in token, we do that. And our tradition is that we see crow as a representative of Peter Loka. They reverence to the deceased people. So this is slowly, you know, slowly there. And on Thursdays, Thursday is a very important day for Baba Lotis. On that day, suppose mother is out of doors and father is busy somewhere. She will say, you prepare for a puja. So we have to prepare puja. Pluck for hours from any place that's available. And all the puja equipments will be there. And then we will have to bath and then do the puja. We have a book. We just repeat that song. Later on, why are we doing this? There is a higher power, which we don't know which our ancestors have known. And we, there should be some method by which we remember that. Otherwise, we will be in our busy attitude, we will forget. So this is the, this is the occasion for every day we are reminded of a higher power. This much she will see. So when, when we were doing this puja later on, we started going through the archanas. We offered them for Baba. So there are 108. Later on, when we started going deeper into it, it was connected to the source. Jiva Dharayama, Sarva Dharayama. Jiva Dharayama, that is the basic substratum for the GF, sense of enjoyment. Sarva, it is the support for everything. Bhaktavaram Prithyanamaha, Bhaktavaram Samarthayamaha, Anna Vastradayamaha, Aruvya Kshemadayamaha. Riddhi Siddhi Dayanamaha, Putra Mitra Kalatra Pradhu Dayanamaha, Yoga Kshema Vahayanamaha, Marga Bandhaviyanamaha, Bukti Mukti Svargavar Gadayanamaha, Priyayanamaha, Preeti Vardhanayanamaha, Antaryamaniyanamaha, Satchitatmaniyanamaha, Jnana Sarupaniyanamaha, Jagata Pitrayanamaha, Bhaktana Madhra Dhatra Vidamahayanamaha. Like that, when we start to go through that, then only we know it's not for a ritual. Through that, God is facilitating us to connect to ourselves with Him. Initially it is a ritual. But later on that ritual is trying to cement, you know, connect ourselves with the original. So that, uh, that comes when we meditate on the archanas. Suppose we, we normally when we go to temple, we do some offering, the pujari does something, we, we, we may hear, we may not hear. Or if we do puja at our own home, we may be doing it as an exercise. But now when we start going, there is meditating. When we start going through the important behind it, the purpose behind it, then you know, you really feel, oh. So that is why, uh, when that, all those things will help us, that he is making us to chant. He is under the Jamini Namara. At least in intellectually we must understand he is the figure. Jeevana Dharaya Namara, Sarva Dharaya Namara. And he is there in my foot, Anna Vastradaya Namara. Like that, in my health, he is there, he has given me the body. All those things will come one by one. So in this way, the chanting, mantra is a chanting. And the meditating on the theme of this mantra helps us to link ourselves.
Uh, this is the foundation. And then when we, uh, in our early age itself, we have to enter into professional career. God will it that way. And we were in Chennai. And second, it was in 61. In 62, we happened to see a banner. Lila Jnani Ajna by Swami Chinnayananda. Initially, we were not enthusiastic at all, interested at all. But somebody compelled us to go. When we were 18, 19 years old, that's all. When we went to that, Lila Jnana, we were a critic, to be very frank, at that time. Because we even told the friend that we have to work for 30 days, earn the salary and send something to our parents. These people, you know, they have no such responsibility. <laughs> they can spark up some slogans and repeat something. So what? In what way, you know, it will go and help my present challenges. But he said, you, anyway, you go on, man. At least for the sake of English, you go. So with that critical, Mindset I went there. 6.30 to 8 was the program. So we reached there by 6.20. We thought, you know, they will come at 6.45 somewhere in there. But 6.28, a car came, Swamiji got out. 6.29, he was before the mic. 6.30 sharp, he started. And you know what was the... We still remember, which had happened 62 years back. <laughs> if 5,000 years ago, if one Mr. Krishna had talked to one Mr. Arjuna, why should you and I hear? What has it got to do with our present day challenges, present day duties? We were taken aback. This is what exactly we were thinking. During the next 21 days, we will try to find out if there is anything worthwhile. If there is nothing, all of us will go to the Marina Beach. It's called Marina Beach. Okay. We will dump the whole thing into the sea. <laughs> so this was the interaction. And we did get it. That is how slowly we start going. And, and then the, an attempt was made. Then we started looking at things. We had a wonderful setup in the office. Bosch company, you know, my co. So we were 1995 people. It was like a family. And the manager was full of values. Nobody thought in terms of any commercial thing. This touch of love, touch of dedication, touch of perfection, touch of gratitude, all these things were welling up in that conducive atmosphere. So whatever may be our profession, I mean, uh, challenges at the domestic level, slowly we started, and we started attending this. And in 1963, God also will, when you, know, you might be knowing, Gurudev dropped the body on 14th July 1963. Parampuji Papa dropped the body on 27th July. 25th July 1963. So there was a... Then Puja Swami said, came to Chennai in connection with the 10th year celebration of Chimya Mission. So on that day, in a, with a choking voice, he said, we have become our friends. Two spiritual stalwarts have quit the scene. One is Swami Shivanji Maharaj of Rishikesh. Another is Swami Ramdas of Anandash. And he made one more particular word about Anandash. Anandash is a temple of sadhana. And we have lost it forever because there we were getting, both these masters were giving individual attention to the Sadhakas, that we have lost it forever. It was a very touching reference. 63 we couldn't go, 64 we went to Dhanandashram. We don't get much leave and met Puja Mataji. After staying there for two or three days, what we are talking about, practical Vedana. There we have, you know, in Chimya Mission we have got Bhagavad Gita, Shankara Varsham, Atma Bhut, Atta Bhut, Vyak Shudamani, all those things are going on. But in Anandashram there is nothing except Ramana. And 
when we were with Bhuti Mataji, in an untold way she conveyed to us the spiritual, the culmination of spiritual practices should be to reach a state where there is absence of other, that you don't have any other ones. Because we were watching her, we used to sit in her room, watching her how she deals with everything. Ashrama Fresh, so many things will come in. Administrative matters, so many things will be there. So how does she deal with men and matters? So drawing inspiration from this, how is it exhibited? So that gave us one more authentication that this is not merely for academic knowledge. It is to improve the quality of our lives. We may fail, we may forget, but we will idealize first, you know. I must reach that point. When we were in school, during the long jump, high jump, first they will put one mark. Then when we fly, we try, we try, we suppose we get through that, they will put it slowly, you know, step by step, step by step. Not in one go, nobody will be able to. So these are, they, this was very clear to us. We must raise that. So that is how God willed so many things to happen in between. But every time, through this Nama chanting mentally, vocal chanting, because we were enthused by this mental chanting. So he can be with us all the time, you know. You don't need it, you will not disturb others. And no specified hours. Right from the morning till the morning, evening, the, whenever there is, even if the period ever so small, one minute you get, your bus stand, you are waiting for one minute, two minutes, three minutes. To keep up. That helps us a lot. And then, so well, we used to go regularly to Asha. Three, four days we used to stay. Till 89 there was going on. 89 some poor God willed that we should uh, try to spend more time there. And he brought about circumstances in such a way that this will, this will only accelerate our move towards the ultimate idea of becoming what we think. It is purely, purely, purely by His grace. And He arranged so many things in between, in between, in between. Initially, when certain things happen, happened in our life, it was difficult for us to reconcile with this. But somewhere, intuitively, He, he don't worry, don't worry. You will be able to get over this, you will be able to get over this. And many, many, through many Mahatmas, that's why we said mysterious, we don't know how it comes. And uh, then we started realizing about mother, father, brothers, teachers at school, colleagues in the office, bosses in the office, friends, how each one is showing their love. They are concerned for us, quality, care and concern for us. And this is particular Vedanta. Always link yourself with the common run of life. And Ananda Ashram, and we will, after leaving, resigning the Maiko, uh, God also willed that we should join a, a Jain uh, for the management of his coffee estate. He was a 100% spiritual man. And they were also running a trust lot of charitable activities. They will not accept any offering from anybody. We try to get the maximum yield from the coffee estate. 100 acres have been set up for that. So whatever profit that accrues, it is limited, not saving it, that will be. For various purposes, education, medical aid, house building, self-employment. <coughs> Supporting institutions who are taking care of the mentally handicapped, blind, <coughs> that gave us a different types of. That means God is initiating us to know the different segments He has provided for us to involve ourselves. And then 
with that background he made us to come to our ashram also they are also the same thing has been going on but mother ji had right from day one was in uh, involved in this papa by himself was not interested he not involved but mother ji papa himself said mother ji was the adhishthana devada vashi she is the mother of all so all the activities silently nobody will know accepting the accounts man who has to write otherwise nobody will know even today that is the legacy that is going on silent that means he provides the way with it he brings the field to another people he makes you to transfer it as a postman job so that the two worship is not there so this is how uh, we are still struggling to reach the goal but we are confident that we are on the path by the grace gap between the two sounds and then try to stretch it then you go back there will be some time any nama there is silence sound silence sound or silence soundlessness silence soundlessness silence and what is that god is also named as great void you know you might be knowing that he is also called the great void because from the Upanishads it says when the when the almighty lord of the universe whose nature is sakti and mystery is energy you know not a person when it wanted to become many the first thing was the space then air then fire then water then earth then trees then food items then human being the sound is the first sound for sound is you need a, a space you know <coughs> so we that is why we are blessed with this nama chanting that is the one directly linking us to the origin so with that bhavana we will try for three times